I'm in Wiltshire to drive a car which is completely electric. This is a 240Z by Datsun, one of the most iconic Datsuns ever made. The car that broke America for that Japanese brand. Electric converted cars are controversial. This has a drift mode. So what you're seeing is a car that's more powerful than most of its piston counterparts will ever be, but at the same time, zero emission, apart from maybe tire smoke. So in this episode, I'm gonna find out what's gone into building this particular car from a company that usually EV converts things like Fiat 500s. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. these sorts of builds are divisive. I know some people will watch this and immediately dismiss it because they said a 240Z has an iconic straight six, you know, the godfather of the Skyline RB series engines. Why have you removed that? It's a travesty. But there's a lot of these cars out there. There's a lot of resto modded cars out there with two JZ swaps and modern RB26 type swaps. And rotary swaps and all kinds of stuff. So they're not so rare that nobody modifies them. And I like to take these things on a case by case basis. If you've watched my stuff over the years, you'll know, I appreciate a lot of electric converted classics. Jack at Silent Classics has really thought about how he wanted his 240Z and what components he wanted to, to reuse. So as you can see from the background, there's a lot of Fiat's, and I did say that Silent Classics does a lot of Fiat conversions to EV. So tell me, Jack, you sort of you do a lot of these. Is this your sort of yeah? So your main focus? Yeah, Fiat's are our main focus, but we'd like to get distracted with weird and wonderful builds. <laughs> yeah, so we do we do Fiat's and bespoke one-off custom yep. cars such as this. How did this come about? Because this is your own car. This is my own car. I bought it uh, two and a half years ago from a friend of mine who had two. And I said, you can't possibly have two, that's too greedy. So he, he sold me one of them. Uh, it came from Arizona. It was, it was pretty rough around the edges. The floors had gone. I didn't buy it to convert it. I bought it because I fell in love with the car. Okay. Um, and then next thing you know, I've got it on a spit and it's nut and bolt restoration. <laughs> engines out and I'm thinking about what what electric drivetrain I can put in it yeah and yeah so almost you know it's almost been three years I can almost say it's finished which is quite extraordinary because I almost this, felt like it was never going to be finished. there's a lot of work in here clearly yeah let me pop the hood yes and uh oh crumbs a lot of anodizing going there on here. Is, yeah the engine bay I suppose you can't really call it an engine bay anymore but. no 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 so I know people watching this this can divide people yeah. With a car like this. Sure. Some people would want you to stick it, leave it as a six pot, as was. Yeah. But I'm always interested, and I know when you contacted us, it was the types of components you use to build this thing together, which yeah. you sort of, you're upcycling quite a lot of stuff, OEM stuff. Definitely, yeah. It uses a bit of a pick and mix of OEM high voltage parts. So you've got a drive motor or pair of motors from a Lexus hybrid, I think it's a GS 450H, which is apparently a really robust, decent bit of kit. And it's using batteries out of a Volvo EV. It's got the um, electric brake master cylinder booster from a Tesla. And it's got a CCS rapid charge system out of a BMW i3. So there's a lot going on here. But what's good is it's, it's repurposed a lot of stuff from existing manufacturers who've spent you know millions of euros developing stuff are giving them a second lease of life in what is a car that when it was new it was a smidge over a ton in weight with 150 horsepower jack thinks it's about 300 horsepower now but he's not entirely sure but the torque is the more impressive thing and it only weighs about 180 kilos or so more than the original car with 50 50 weight distribution still there so it's a mongrel, it's a you know, mix of all these different OEM components. Don't say mongrel, <laughs> it does it a disservice. Yes, you're probably right, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so loads of different yeah. things. I think the only new component is the charger. So we're running a 650 volt system. 
um, which is not your, it's not the most, most EVs are 360 volts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Um, what made you want to go for that kind of voltage? Just because you wanted it to be quick or? Yeah, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Jack said that this Lexus hybrid twin motor transmission uh, system is about 300 horsepower equivalent. He thinks it'll do 62 in like three something seconds. I will demonstrate that quickly. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it, it's way quick enough for a classic car. <laughs> way quick enough. Soaks up the bumps really well. Changes direction beautifully, I have to say. Dodging potholes, you know, it does really, it turns a lot quicker and a lot more enthusiastically than I was expecting it to. It definitely doesn't feel heavier and it sure as hell isn't slower because we know it isn't. It's a lot quicker in fact. That's amazing, so still rear wheel drive. I can see the sort of bell housing right here. Yes. So the Lexus drivetrain is from a hybrid. Indeed. Is that right? It looks like a gearbox and it kind of is a gearbox, but it's actually got two electric motors built in it. So both those electric motors in the Lexus, only one of them was used to propel the rear, rear axle. But we're using both of the motors, so we're almost doubling the power of just this unit. Wow. So without the V6 bolted to it at all, we're getting way better performance than the Lexus ever was. Wow. Which is insane. So we're, we've calculated 6,000 newton meters torque. Bloody hell. Yeah. So because of the high voltage, it, it has torque all the way up to the rev range. Okay. So in low voltage systems, you often have great off the line, but as soon as the revs it, increase, it, it tails sags, off and yeah. you, start, you start to lose it with this, whatever speed, all the way up to 100 miles an hour, is just mentally quick. So overtaking at any speed is ridiculous. Brilliant. That Tesla booster, it, you know, it does take a bit of getting used to the sensitivity of the pedals. Throttle's really punchy, like really punchy. I've been warned about drift mode, definitely not a mode for road use. So if I find somewhere appropriate, I will, I'll have a little go on skid mode. And it's got loads of nice progressive clout when you want it to have, it's, it's got lovely road manners. It's engaging, so don't let people tell you that an EV can't be engaging, because it really can. It's just a different type of engagement. And the ride, you know, it's on adjustable coilover suspension, because of course the 240Z was really good at racing. It's one of the things that um, Datsun really wanted to conquer early on to try and cement their strength in the American market. One of the coolest actors of all time, Paul Newman, he raced one of these successfully for a long time, uh, and the 260Z, which came out about four years after the launch of this, just because it had a bigger engine, a 2.6. An independent rear suspension on 240Zs from new, so they were a more advanced beast than the likes of the Capri, which, uh, remember, it came out in the same year, 1969. This particular version still got an independent rear, and, and the rides really, I like it a lot. And the, the torque, the, the on-demand torque, because it's an electric car, maximum torque from zero RPM, it feels really urgent. And this being 600 volts, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of response here. Plenty for a car of this size and, you know, weight, less than 1,200 kilos, I think. It's actually harder to retrofit EV in a, in a classic as well as restoring it than just restoring it back to how it was because you've got to work out what drivetrain it should have, how far do you want it to have the range. So this particular car has a range of about 130 miles but of course you could go for more range, more batteries but that means more weight and in this instance they wanted the car to still feel lightweight and agile and have that similar DNA to what you'd expect to a 240. And is that liquid cooled? Liquid cooled indeed, yep. So yep. the liquid, liquid cooled motor and inverter. So the motor and inverter sits underneath kind of the battery box and it's one assembly that we design that just bolts up into the original mount. Uh, and then we've got a battery box front and there's one in the rear, pretty much the same size as this. So we've got pretty even weight distribution now. Okay. 
Yeah, so the kilowatt hours of this is combined 36 kilowatt hour pack. Yep. So it's quite light. Um, it but, is light. Yeah, so uh, I didn't want to make the car heavy. I just wanted to make it nimble. I didn't want to put a you know 80 kilowatt hour pack in because it, I think it would spoil the handling of the car. Yeah, but and we, I suppose that's a trade-off, isn't it? Yeah. If you wanted to build this to do 350 mile range, yeah. you It'd could. Be heavy, really, be heavy. really heavy. So what we've done is we fitted CCS, uh, which helps with long journeys uh, under here. And, and how rapid's the rapid charging? About 80 kilowatts. Okay. Yeah, so it should be pretty good. That's all right. So yeah, we're pretty happy with it. Um, we've got brake bias valve here. So there's oh, yeah. right. lots to play with. Willwood disc brakes at the rear. Brakes, I believe, four pot calipers and discs at the front from a, a Toyota pickup truck. And actually relatively quiet, given that it doesn't have much additional soundproofing from the original car. So it does have noises. You know, it's a myth that electric cars don't make any noise. And certainly when you're taking a car that used to have an engine, a piston engine, and you're retrofitting a new recipe of parts, it does have its own sounds. They're not, they're not sexy, not in that way that, I don't know, a straight six with a, a decent manifold and exhaust on wood, but they're different. And I like different sometimes. There's room in the world for different. And yeah, you can hear the motor whirring a bit, which is what you normally get. But the difficulty for companies, I think, like Silent Classics, is no one's used to driving a car like this, resto modded or otherwise, with no engine sound. So you start to hear wind noise, maybe suspension noises, that you wouldn't have ever heard before. You just wouldn't. But as soon as you have an EV, there are things you hear that you wouldn't have heard and you go, is that a cause for concern or, or, if, or is that not a cause for concern? And when I built my electric street legal drag car, I had that exact moment of going, I can hear all the rose jointed suspension. Is it supposed to clonk like that? Is that normal? I saw that you've got different kind of headlights, you know, like probably LEDs or Yeah, LEDs at the front, yep. Love the, love the colour and I love the wheel combination. Yep. I mean, it's so, it's like every evening when I was building this car, I was just up at night just thinking about what wheels are going to put, what, you know, it's just, it's yeah. the infinite choices you can have. Yeah. It's just so hard to find a decision. Yeah. There's so many different avenues of, but I'm pretty happy with the end result. I think it's pretty good. Well, talking of avenues, I want to have a look in the cabin because that's got some really different twists. Sure. So the cabin, I really like this cabin. I, when I saw pictures of it, I thought, this is nice. Thank you very much. It's, there's this combination of like lovely kind of retro textures, but with clearly something new going on here. Yeah. So we've got the, uh, this is a, a tablet that we've managed to get in there. So this panel here, we, um, we free, 3D printed basically, uh, and then had it flocked. Uh, it took several attempts to get it to fit nicely and work with the center console. Yeah. The and flocking's amazing. This. Yep. Looks yep. wonderful. It's so good. A chap called uh, Flock Speed did a great job of that. That dash, that flock dash, there's something really cool about it. Love the shape of it and the flock finish, which is really popular in motorsport to stop glare. But, you know, this was an Arizona import car, so the interior had been baked to death. The plastic dash was in a state of ruination. It just really spruces it up nicely. So the electric power steering is from a Vauxhall Corsa, I believe, which is used in so many classics, both piston and electric, because it works really well. In fact, I've got one going into my Allegro Street Sleeper project. But uses the original steering wheel. I love this thin rim, it's wonderful. It really is, it's a great thing. Original steering wheel with yeah. our own emblem here with our logo on it. And then if I put the lights on, we've got some beautiful, beautiful. Speed Hut CAN bus gauges. We haven't just gone digital, we'll look at, you know, we've got the best of both worlds. So we've got yeah. analog displaying, you know, amps, battery state of charge, everything like that. Yeah. And we've also got this, so you can put your Spotify on them. We've got a really good sound system in here. Subwoofers behind the seats. Speaking of seats, we've got heated seats here, which are great. This is, a, this is good news. Yeah, and they're brown as well. So when you put your foot down, no one would know. <laughs> Still got a gear stick. Well, that just tells you the direction that shows you, you know, push it forward to go forward, click it back to go into reverse, no gears. Whereas the 240Z in its original form would have been five or four speed manual. I think they did an auto. So if you wanted to, of course, you could use this car, you know, every day, apart from the fact that they do like to rust, as we now know. 
well, th this is the main feature, the drive modes, which, um, yeah. so we've got Eco, which is a pretty tame map, a yeah. uh, bit of regen, and then Sport, which is lively, yeah. uh, and then Drift, I mentioned earlier this had a two-speed transmission, so yeah. Drift, if we push that, uh, changes the is a little solenoid which changes the gear the gear ratio basically which oh. puts it into max super super torque mode basically <laughs> so you touch the throttle and before you know it, you're facing the opposite direction so it's it's not for road use not really no it's just for a bit of fun it maybe yeah. if you're in a car park and you uh, feel like you want to be 18 again and <laughs> <laughs> I'm in private property here I can't afford to hire out racetracks on the late break show sadly. Um, but this is a farmyard. I reckon I could probably have a few skids around here. I mean, it's quiet. What's the worst that can happen? So if I do do that, I need to put it in drift mode, which is exactly what it was developed for. Look, press drift mode. Everything's just that little bit more leery, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's suddenly really, really, really alive. Get the bag. That's quite wild. That is quite wild. Oh my god, I'm like using 10% of the second. It's a wet day. <laughs> it's a wet day. <laughs> wow, I mean, this has got a standard steering lock. It could probably do with a bit more lock. But it steps out of shape. Wow, it steps out of shape so viciously and quick. Wow, that, you would never get that kind of delivery. It's so hard to gauge because you don't have an RPM, you don't have a gear, and you've got way more power than you would normally have with a, a combustion engine. So it's a very different beast when you, when you first try it. This is the thing people say, oh, you know, you can't make electric cars fun. You can make them enormously fun. And make no mistake, it's a different kind of fun. Whoa! Well, I'm working in quite a tight spot. <laughs> I can't believe the power this has got. <laughs> things, things up, mate. Things, things up. It gives you an idea of how much instantaneous torque there is. All right, all right. Oh. Well, that's just a, a very small suggestion of what this sort of car is capable of. And when you convert a classic to electric, the world is your oyster with regards to how much power you want to dial in, what kind of behavior you want it to have. That was good fun. They call them silent classics, but they're not entirely silent, are they? I mean, there is some noise. So that's proof that it'll skid if you wanted to. Of course, it's not set up to fully drift. You could build one to fully drift. You'd want to change the steering geometry. You want to give it more lock, all that stuff. But it just gives you an idea of what you can do. And it's damn potent, I have to say. It's a lot more potent than I was expecting it in terms of sensitivity. And it probably handles better than a, an original 240, I'd say. It's a good looking car though. It's aged so well. And you know, and in a world where car prices are going up anyway, and if you want a bit of character to a car, instead of buying a brand new electric car, you could just buy or commission a converted classic. This is not a cheap conversion. To convert a 240Z with any kind of EV drivetrain such as this, you're probably looking at 50, 60,000 pounds, which is a huge amount of money. But these cottage industries like silent classics, you know, they don't, they're not churning out dozens of cars a month. 
they're an artisan business and they're for a small amount of people who really, really want to do something differently and really want EV drivetrain propulsion in a more interesting car. And I think there's room in the world for that, even if it's just for one or two percent of folks. Yeah, we always end up, clients are always, oh, yeah, could I have this, could I have that? And we don't mind because we love, we love, you know, we love a challenge, we love doing fun, interesting stuff. So, yeah. we, so we say, yeah, great, we'll, we'll do it, definitely. And do you do everything in-house here? Everything in-house, yeah. Wow. The, yeah, the only thing we don't do is trim. So the company down the road called HG Classics who did the trim in here, did a great job. Yeah, it's beautiful. But apart from that, everything is, is more or less done in-house. Now, we'll, look, we'll move to the back, because obviously yeah. this is a hatchback. Yep. And it's actually got, you say it's got a battery pack back there, but it's also still got massive boot. Yeah, yeah. Which is, means it's bloody practical. Yes, it is, it yeah. is. Right, rear end. Right, yeah, rear end. So, obviously, it looks beautiful, and I know it's been restored. Yep. So, there are you saying there's a battery pack under here as well? There is, yep. Yeah, basically, in the spare wheel where we've got batteries, uh, and you never know. Basically, you've got full boot space here. Yeah, there's no lumps or bumps. Yep. It's just kind of... Uh, yeah, and to the train 240 enthusiast, the only difference on the back is we don't have the... There's a, usually a little cutout here for the exhaust. Oh, for the weather yeah, balance. Which yeah, we, had, yeah. we had to lose, because it looks so funny having this weird cutout with nothing coming out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. apart from that, it's very standard. But underneath, we've redesigned the diff mount about five times because we keep kept breaking them. Um, it's amazing how much force is put for a diff, upwards force on the nose of the diff. It's trying like, trying to... It's, yeah, it's just amazing how much force. Yeah. Um, you think like drag cars, they always wheelie and that's all that force is in that nose of the diff. So yeah, we've been through plenty of diff mounts and this one seems to be holding up and we're running a Impreza LSD, which seems to be taking the power so far so good. So that's the rear diff of a Subaru Impreza? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. 3.54. What are they, 15 inch tyres? Yeah, they're 15, 15 inch, wheels? inch yeah. rims. So this was the petrol filler flap. This yeah, is so now we've got the Type 2 charge. This is your Type 2, kind of like 7 kilowatt uh, yeah. wall box at home. Exactly, yeah. Slow charge. And then CCS up the and front. And that's your rapid yeah. charge up there. Nice. Yeah. That's really neat. No, it's not five, six, seven hundred 700 horsepower, but it just doesn't need to be. And it stops. Look at that, someone's just done a late brake in front of me. Late brake. And it's okay. I stopped and I can just take off like that. I got a bit of regen braking when I touch the brakes and I can rapid charge it if I want to. I'm here to drive the 240Z, but actually Silent Classic's main business at the moment is much smaller classics than this. It's actually these that Silent Classics have focused on recently, converting these little things, Fiat 126s and Fiat 500s, to fully electric, perfect for city use. Is this boss eyed? That's boss eyed, it's pointing outwards. And take this, a fully patinated old Bentley that the owner who lives in central London wants to continue driving around in it, but wants to make it zero emission, full EV underneath. Very cool. You know what this is, a classic Range Rover, V8, gas guzzler, I mean 12 to the gallon even if you're trying hard to save fuel. This, this is going to be converted to EV over the next couple of months. The boys have already done a couple of early Range Rovers, this one's in for the same treatment. That's a chode. Come on, I know it's really cold. I know it's really cold, but you, you can do this. Yeah, come on chap, come on. So obviously, you know, the, the Fiat behind you, that's a perfected recipe that you guys have got for the conversion. Yeah. This and maybe like that lovely old Jag there that yeah. we were looking at earlier, mm. um, which has got, is that got a Nissan Leaf that's drive a, Yeah, Nissan Leaf, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So the, the, these are sort of like individual case by case builds, yeah. aren't they? I mean, the design that goes into this is very tailored to this. If we were to do a 240 again, we could definitely use a lot of this technology for, towards that. And to that end, if somebody watches this video and goes, I quite fancy a 240Z EV. Yeah, yeah well, get to get in touch. Well, okay, so yeah. you will do another one? Definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay. Who are the people that come to you and buy these kinds of conversions or bring a car to you and say, I've got this, but I want it to be EV, like, like the owner of that, for example? Like, who are they? I mean, yeah, they're not, I wouldn't say they're necessarily classic car nuts. I don't know, I think people love, they love the idea of driving a classic, but they just don't like the idea of the maintenance. Yeah. I think that's a big one. They just want something, they want to get in something and they want to future-proof it and they want it to work and they don't have to worry about it breaking down. So yeah. that's a big one, I think. So it's a different breed of 
owner to what yeah. the traditional, which is what I yeah. suspected was the case, or, or a, like you say, a younger person who likes the look of a car like a Z. Exactly. I mean, you want to, you want to buy an electric car, but to be honest, most of the electric cars new are pretty boring and ugly. They so, are quite, there's a lot of generic looking yeah, they're, cars. Yeah, they're kind of all the same to me in my eyes anyway. So why don't you just invest that money into something which looks epic? Yeah. Because the technology in this is quite similar to a Tesla. I mean, I'm not saying they handle quite like a Tesla, but they do take off like a Tesla. And <laughs> to, to any purists, doubts and purists watching this and maybe weeping slightly. Mm, sorry. Is this all reversible? Yeah, totally reversible, yeah. Right, okay. But I'd be very upset if anyone did reverse it because it's been a lot of work. I know that this is not going to appeal to everybody. Mm. And people say that it, it's EVs are soulless. They're not soulless, it's just a different kind of soul. Yeah. I think most people that say that haven't actually driven an electric classic car. No. So or an electric car. Yeah, or an electric car. Because yeah. I've always been a petrolhead. I was going to ask, how on earth did you get into silent classics? So my, my father was a classic car restorer. Yeah. And I kind of took over his business restoring cars for many years. And my personal project was a Fiat 126, which I bought for 50 quid when I was 16. The one outside. The one out there, yeah. And the engine, I think it dropped a valve and the engine just scrambled and I didn't know what to do with it. And then basically one night, I remember I was in bed sleeping and woke up and thought, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it electric. The following week, I bought a, a used a Citroen EV, it was called. I had no idea where to start, but I just managed to take all the parts from the Citroen and, f and package it into the 126. Wow. And the process, I just fell in love with the process. I thought, this is... This is so fun. You know, restoration is, is great, but you have to, you, certain rules you have to abide by. Yeah. With the conversions, you, you can express yourself a bit more. And I yeah. just really enjoyed the design. And that's basically why I do what I do, because I just love the process. Well, it's marrying the old and the new, isn't it? It's really fun. We, we do so much. We do 3D printing. There's so much CAD. There's loads of electrical design, fabrication, machining. It's just, if you're into engineering, it's like everything in one. You're a young team as well, I've yeah. noticed. Yes, yeah, we're, we're pretty young. Here's a question for you. If you could have any classic car converted to EV, so remove its engine and put high voltage electric propulsion in it, what would it be? What's the ultimate car for the job in your opinion? I have my, I have my thoughts. Gosh, I don't know, to be honest. There's plenty of, ah, I can't decide. We've got a DB6, which is gonna be pretty special. That I know. Yeah, but that, that's gonna upset a lot of people. That is well. gonna upset a lot of people. Yeah. Interesting to know, you know, who the owner is and why they want it to be done. I always want. I think what I quite like to do, because we the Fiat, right? I really would like to put a ridiculously overpowered motor in a Fiat, yeah, and widen it and just make it just terrifying. <laughs> I think that's. I've done something similar to yeah, that in my yeah. life. Not a Fiat, an even smaller car yeah. than a Fiat. But I can tell you, it's good fun. Yeah. You got to be paying attention though. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> It's great though. Yeah. It's really fun to express ourselves through the car and, and you know make something really special. Yeah. That's what we that's what we that's why we do it, we love it. I just like seeing the creativity of EV Resto Mod classics because you see people's interpretation of, of how they want it to be, what kind of a power they think is acceptable. But of course you can look at this car and go, well, I wouldn't want it in this colour, I wouldn't necessarily want this upholstery, I wouldn't want the flocking, say I wouldn't want a tablet. You don't have to. You don't have to. This is merely a demonstrator for like how you could have it if you wanted. Choices of wheels and paint and ride height, they're all up to you, you the customer. I know some of the Late Break Show viewers will be annoyed at this car. Some will get it. Some will understand who this might be for. And maybe that idea that I believe in allows a new breed of people to become interested in classic cars who maybe didn't want them in their purest form. It's okay to be different. It's seriously quick. 